Good evening, YouTube. I'd like to make a short video documenting some previous selling prices of carbon arc lamps and uh, just say some things about Facebook. Um, on the carbon arc lamp collectors restoration buying and selling Facebook page, there are numerous posts from multiple different members where previous auctions have been recorded to better appraise and figure out what some of these arc lamps are worth. In any effort to uh, to kind of conceal or obfuscate past selling prices of these arc lamps, it, it's a deliberate effort to control what you're gonna what somebody might pay for it. It's dishonest, it's theft. And uh, there's no reason that there shouldn't be public knowledge of previous auctions and uh, online selling prices of these carbon arc lamps. Um, it, it's, uh, th that, to me, is the honest thing to do. It's the right thing to do for buyers and sellers. And uh, anybody that's trying to conceal past selling prices, it's just theft. It's dishonest. And, and that's not somebody you want to deal with. It, uh, it, it's just not an open and honest thing to do. Um, if you have any questions, there's people out there, uh, Pete Moriello and Mike Spatafora are, uh, probably some of the most foremost experts in restoring and reproducing parts, uh, with, with these arc lamps, you know, I encourage you to get online and, uh, there, it, with that being said, there's a lot of older people who, who don't use computers. There's probably 40 or 50 collectors out there. Just a ballpark figure, 10 that I know of off the top of my head that have phenomenal collections, but they're just, they're not online. That's not something they do. So anyway, with, with, uh, with, with that out of the way, what I'd like to go over is some previous auctions and uh, discuss the selling prices of these items. And if you have any questions, just get on to the Carbon Arc Selling and Restoration Group and uh, your questions will be answered in a very timely and thorough manner. If you're looking to sell, there's a lot of people out there that would be more than happy to uh, point you in the right direction to figure out a price, instructing you how to sell it, and uh, just overall helpful information in restoring these lamps. Um, there's not many videos. Uh, I think there's only one or two videos on YouTube. And uh, probably about two years ago, I had some videos, and I had to take them down because... In those videos, I was not thorough in voicing and expressing the dangers and risks with with powering up these lamps. I, I mean, I was all uh, all gung ho and saying, you know, how 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 you could do this, this, and this to get these things running. And then three people over a course of a year messaged me. Well, I watched your video and it looked really easy to uh, fire up my lamp and I plugged it in and it, it uh, started smoking and burning because I didn't express the risks and I didn't go over how to test these lamps. And a lot of people, they see these lamps on eBay and they think, oh, it's an alternating current lamp. Well, guess what? How many cycles was it designed for? Because a majority, 95% of these arc lamps were designed for 133 cycles or higher. And the cores inside of them, the inductors, are not meant to run long periods of time. So they'll overheat and you'll melt and, and catch on fire the parts on your lamp. So uh, you've got your DC lamps, which are designed to operate anywhere between 50 to 110 volts DC. Half the times they don't have a resistor inside of them. And then you have all of your alternating current lamps, which, assuming they are in good condition, will run for short periods of time on 60 hertz, 120 volts AC. But majority of these lamps, when they were designed, there was no standard for current and voltage distribution. So I took the videos down because I had too many YouTube experts. And uh, I will be making some new videos going over the hazards and how to mitigate them and properly run these lamps. So... If you're still here, after me spending five minutes of me running my mouth, uh, this is a GE Thompson arc lamp, and uh, I want to say about two years ago, it sold online for a price of $1,700 for these two lamps, which is an extremely, extremely good price, as these are complete lamps. Uh, 
if if I do recall, I uh, these all these were alternating current lamps, and there were two of them. One of them has all of the components. This was an incredibly good price, and seventeen hundred dollars is an exceptionally good deal. As you can see, the case has the original finish. It's in excellent condition. The top metal housing could probably use some uh, some uh, restoration work, but overall, it has the glass globes and the inner glass globe, and that is an extremely good price. $1,700 for that is a phenomenal price. These lamps right here, it was a group of six, and they sold for from an estate sale liquidator, sold for a price of $4,200 for the group of six, and they were missing all their glassware, various different components. They were DC lamps, and uh, they're, they're not in the best of shape, but with the proper investment, um, could easily be restored. That price is not too bad for somebody that has the technical know-how to properly restore these fixtures. Here's another picture of those lamps hanging up. Um, they're DC lamps made by a company called Volkmer, V-O-L-K-M-E-R. Next, uh, this sold sometime uh, in 2022, this year, was uh, a single Adams Bagnall lamp. It was missing the glassware, it was missing the globe holder, and all of the bottom carbon holders. It sold for $1,600, and uh, the, the outer casing has been damaged and defaced. Uh, some, some person felt like polishing this was, was the thing to do. However, Adams Bagnall lamps were never, ever available from the factory in a polished metal finish. So these have been damaged, but they did have all of the uh, internal alternating current components. But like I said, they were missing the bottom carbon holders and of course the, uh, the glassware. So that kind of influenced that $1,600 price. Here is another Adams Bagnall lamp that sold this year, 2022. It has the bottom globe holder, the uh, bottom, uh, the, the inner globe, it was cracked, uh, and did have all of the internal DC components, and it looks like it had been spray painted black at some point in its life. It could be the original finish, I'm not entirely sure, but uh, sold for $1,800, which is a very reasonable price for that. Uh, it did have some rust on the top, which you can't really see in those pictures here, but overall it was a very good condition lamp. This, uh, this was just a gutted shell, and somebody was very, very eager to get one of these. That sold for $795, which for a gutted shell missing all of its components in the top insulator, save for the hanger insulator, that's a ripoff, and somebody was really, really desperate, and if they had just been patient, they could have gotten a more complete unit for less money, but uh, that gutted shell right there sold for $795 to a very eager buyer. The next one, this one, uh, I I uh, I just am incredibly in awe. This one sold for one thousand seven hundred dollars on eBay, and uh, was probably the the most uh, good shape Adams Bagnall lamp that I have ever seen on lamp. This is probably new old stock condition. Uh, it had the uh, original inner globe, outer globe, which has that characteristic amethyst color. The uh, globe holder ring and the ornate scalloped, very desirable version. It did not have the inner globe, but it did have the inner globe hanger. And uh, the shell is in is in just factory mint condition. Uh, beautiful, beautiful factory mint condition finish. The only downside with this lamp is it was a series lamp. The internal guts for this lamp were made for series which um, this lamp will probably never run, ever, because the power supply to fire up a series arc lamp is uh, very exotic, and to my knowledge, nobody has built one, and doesn't. They don't. nobody has the technical expertise to design the uh, complexities, due to the fact that for a brief second, it has to strike the arc at 180 volts, and then regulate down to whatever predetermined voltage, probably 100 volts, to sustain the arc. But uh, I, I would have I would have been very very happy to have that uh, lamp and and eventually put you know DC or AC components inside of it. But that sold 
online for $1,700, which is a phenomenal price. This is a blueprinting lamp made by Western Electric under the Hawthorne brand, and it sold for uh, $810 uh, a few months ago in 2022, and it's missing the glassware, and uh, is a bit high. Um, it did need some restoration work, some painting, uh, sandblasting, bead blasting, whichever. But in order to run this thing, it would require anywhere between 30 to 40 volts due to the fact that blueprinting lamps are made to output the maximum amount of ultraviolet radiation and are not meant for lighting. They're meant to make UV rays to uh, process the blueprinting chemicals on the paper and develop them. Uh, it uh, it was had some rust, but uh, you know, nonetheless, it sold for eight hundred and ten dollars, which is a bit high. However, you know, people if they want to spend it, uh, you know, eBay is a market value system, and that's what it sold for. The next lamp is a Siemens Lilliput lamp, which sold for sixty seven pound sixty seven point six seven pounds, which is about eighty five dollars in American dollars which is very, uh, that's a very low price. They had it missed, they, they, the seller didn't have it listed correctly and uh, not many people found out about it, but that's a, that's a steal for 90 bucks. It had all of the internal components. It's a DC lamp and then it had the uh, ultra rare outer glass globe, but that is a very good price for a pretty neat lamp. Our next lamp is a General Electric Thompson lamp, which sold a few months ago in 2022, that was complete. Had everything there, which is why it sold for $3,850. This was an alternating current lamp, and I assume had all of the original internal components, but aside from some minimal external restoration work, some bead blasting and uh, repainting, refinishing, had every single component. And I bet with the proper tuning and testing, this thing probably, if you plugged it into the wall, would run right off the bat with the proper tuning and would probably function, you know, 10, 15 minutes fine on alternating current, save for the fact that it would heat up that choke coil due to the fact that it was most likely designed for 133, 166, or 233 hertz at 110 volts AC. I could be wrong, but uh, most of these AC lamps, in order for them to operate correctly, without hammering and chattering, had to operate at a higher hertz frequency besides 60 hertz. This Adams Bagnall shell right here sold for $500 as a gutted shell, and uh, the external, the, uh, the, the finish, the original factory finish has been damaged, and uh, somebody polished it uh, in their opinion. That's what they thought looked good. However, these lamps were never available from the factory with uh, a polished brass finish. So this lamp has been damaged. So I hope you found this information helpful. If you have a lamp, a carbon arc lamp that you're trying to restore or maybe figure out how much it's worth, there's a lot of people that can, sh that can steer you in the right direction. And uh, Facebook really is the, uh, the next level in uniting the uh, communities and everybody out there that collects arc lamps. So if you have any questions, uh, get on that Facebook group. There's a ton of experts on there. The community is very small, but there's some good people on there. And uh, they'll be more than happy to steer you in the right direction. So I hope I haven't bored you to death. But this was a very impromptu video. And uh, I hope you found the information useful. So if you have any questions, reach out to Facebook and we'll go from there. Thank you for watching. And until next time, bye-bye.